Listen, good morning. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you is our prayers. Welcome to the in-person and virtual services of the New Ebenezer Baptist Church, 6300 Hartford Avenue here in the city of Detroit, Michigan. We are praising and blessing God again for chance, privilege, and opportunity to be in the Lord's house. It's the first Sunday of July. The Lord has blessed us and sustained us and brought us to this time of life and living. And then it's the, it's the 4th of July, Independence Day, where we celebrate not just our American freedom, but our freedom that Christ has given to us through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you all, but I'm excited about worship. Anybody else? I am excited about worship and what the Lord is doing in our lives on today. You know how we do it. Wherever you are, come on and stand. If you're watching us virtually, come on and stand with us as well as we prepare ourselves to enter worship that we might praise, lift, glorify, and magnify the Savior. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and the record is that we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. You ought to just tell somebody, I'm happy in Jesus. I'm happy. I'm happy in Jesus. At home, come on. You're watching us virtually. Come on. You're listening to us on the prayer line. Come on as we lift, glorify, and magnify our Savior. Remain standing with us. Welcome to the New Ebenezer Baptist Church. with us on this morning.
Good morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Scripture will be coming from Proverbs, third chapter, the first six verses. Maybe please stand for the reading of the word. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandment. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not into your own understanding. And I declare in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. I had just read to you Proverbs 3, third chapter, the first six verses. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers and most of all, the doers of his most holy word. <clears throat> Let us pray. O oh, gracious eternal Father. O oh, gracious eternal Father. O oh, gracious eternal Father. It's once again we thank you, Lord, for waking us on this day. This is the day that you have made. So we thank you, Father, and we honor you today as we do each and every day. But, Father God, we thank you for waking us and allowing us to see another day. We thank you, Lord, for giving us safe passage to the worship house on today. We thank you that you allowed us to arrive at 6300 Hartford safe. So, Father God, on that note, we just say thank you. Father God, we thank you on so many fronts. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us from last week to this week. Father God, it's my prayer that you touch those families, Father God, that was affected by the floods and the rain. Bless them, Father God. Father God, I ask right now you bless every each and every last one member here on today. Bless every auxiliary and ministry. Bless our pastor, Father God. Bless our first lady. We thank you, Father God, for all things. Father God, we thank you for the 45 years that you, this church has been here, Father God. We bless you for that, Father God. Father God, I ask right now you touch every last family, Father God, that's represented here today. Bless their homes, Father God. And whatever you see fit, Father God, that they stand in the need of, bless them. Bless them. It says in your word, Father God, in John 3, you gave, your, you gave up your darling son, your only forgotten son, Father God, that we can all have a right to the tree of life. So, Father God, on that note, Father God, we're going to hold on to it, and Father God, we're going to worship you. So I ask that you undergird us all with your love on today. Continue to be with us throughout this day, Father God. We can't do this thing without you. I said we can't do this thing without you. So we're going to hold on to your word, Father God. We're going to hold on to your hand. And we're going to trust. We're going to trust that everything is going to be all right. So we thank you for that, Jesus. We thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who suffered and died on Calvary's cross, that we can all have a right to that precious tree of life. So we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, let all the saints here say amen and thank God. Good morning, Ed. 1 Thessalonians 
5 and 18 says, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Today we are praying for Sister Mary Jones and Tracy Jones, the mother and sister of Harriet Cook, Brother Dennis Lay, Sister Pat Farr, Reverend Leonard Jones, Sister April Gregory, Brother Antoine Scott, Brother Horace Kegler, Mother Lola Livingston, Brother Rufus Brown, Brother Keith Dewberry, Brother Oscar Cunningham, Brother John Anderson Sr., Sister Jackie Payne, Sister Pam Nunn, Sister Brittany Gribble, Sister Angela Joseph, Sister Deborah Johnson, Sister Catherine Hilton, Sister Linda Watkins, Sister Sharon Rivers, Sister Savage, Brother Louis Burnett, Sister Artis Ely, and family in the passing of her mother, the Turnage family and the passing of Sister Vanessa Turnage, Sister Cynthia Reed and family and the passing of her brother, Brother John Reed, the Shorter family and the passing of her brother, Cornelius Shorter, the Swint family and the passing of Brother Daryl Swint, and Brother Earl Washington and family and the passing of his mother, Sister Leola Washington. Please, let's continue to keep those lifted in your prayers. Thank you.
Come on, let's enter in the worship this morning. Say, we have come. We have come into this house. Gathered in his name to worship him. How do you help this morning? We have come into this house. Gather in his name to worship him. We have come into this hour. Oh, to worship our Lord.
shall we? Lord, again, we thank you for grace, mercy, love, and kindness. Thank you for another day, another chance, another privilege to be in your house. Lord, you've been good to us. You have blessed us, kept us, and sustained us, and brought us together again. That we might lift, glorify, magnify your name. It's preaching time again. Pour in, allow us to pour out. That when we leave this place, we leave here the better. Not because of us, but because of your will, your way, and your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And bless God. Worship him. Put your hands together. Bless the Lord. How good the Lord is. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Put your hands together. Bless the Lord. How good the Lord is. How good the Lord is. How good the Lord is on today. Listen, we praise and bless God again for chance, privilege, and opportunity to be in the Lord's house. The Lord has been good to us. He has blessed us and kept us, brought us together again, whether in person, virtually, or by phone. The Lord has brought us together again that we might lift, glorify, and magnify his name. How many people know that worship in the Lord, he is worthy of all of our praises on today. Come on, put your hands together. We bless the Lord for our own sister Patricia Taylor on today. Come on, show Trisha some love, blessing us on today in worship. We certainly praising God for her blessing us for worship on today in song. Our own minister Wallace Mills blessing us. We praise and thank God for him on today. And you, my brothers and sisters, for sharing with us in worship on today. It is the first Sunday. <clears throat> the first Sunday in July. The Lord has been gracious and the Lord has been kind to us. We invite you to share with us. Uh, in our worship experience each Sunday morning, next Sunday morning, weather permitting, we're going to be outside. Somebody say outside. We're going to be outside in our worship experience. We're going to share together. We encourage you all to come on out and share with us as we worship on the outside. Take our music ministry on the outside. Take our saints of God on the outside and we shall worship and bless the Lord together. We shall break bread with each other after the worship on the outside. Somebody say on the outside. We're going to share in the worship experience and we look forward to having a grand and glorious time uh, in the name of our Christ. I'm inviting all of our members. Come on and share with us. Come on and share with us. If you go to the grocery store, you can meet us on the outside. Amen. You can go shopping into the mall and the Great Lakes Crossing and all the other places I see y'all at. Y'all don't see me because y'all got a mask on. You can worship on the outside. So come and share with us as we worship on the outside on next Sunday, weather permitting. Looking forward to having a great time in worship and then a great time uh, in fellowship as well. So do come and share with us as we lift, magnify, and bless the name of our Christ. We pray for so many individuals uh, who certainly desire the prayers uh, of our church. We keep you all lifted and we keep you all covered uh, in our prayers that the Lord shall certainly bless you and that the Lord shall keep you and sustain you uh, in this time of life and living. So many names are called. You heard those names called on today and we're certainly praying for those individuals that God will move mightily. Somebody say mightily. Whatever the situation, whatever the circumstance is, that the Lord shall move mightily and that the Lord shall be gracious and that the Lord shall certainly bless, heal, deliver, and set free whatever people are dealing with in this time of life and living. Those families who are bereaved, we're praying for you. Those individuals who are in hospitals, we're praying for you. Those who are convalescing at home, we're praying for you. And those folk who just dealing with a whole lot of drama in life, we praying for you. Amen. And so we look forward to sharing that time uh, together. Let me also encourage you all because our, 
our Christian education staff and our Sunday school team is trying to put together some, some normalcy in some way. And so they invite you all to share with them in uh, a night Sunday school session. We're going to try to put that together, night Sunday school session, a three-day vacation Bible school session. Everything's going to be done in-house. Uh, we can't bring nobody in right now. We're just working on some stuff. Got to get us back to where we need to be. And so we invite you all to register and sign up. If you have not done so, register uh, and sign up to take part uh, in this great time of study. I tell you all all the time, spiritual growth comes by studying the Word of God, eating the Word of God, and allowing the Word of God to take growth in our lives. And so we're going to come together and share, and even then, we're setting up outdoor settings. Somebody say outdoors. We're setting some things up outdoors that we might be able just to come together and just to share and to celebrate uh, one with the other. And so sign up. You got your packages on yesterday. There were registration forms in there. There were registration forms that were available uh, even on today. As you came into the sanctuary, you can go to our uh, New Air uh, Detroit page. You can go there to our New Air page and uh, you can register there uh, as well. Don't wait till the last minute. <clears throat> Somebody say amen. Don't wait till the last minute. Go to that page and register with us so that we will be able to make sure that we have the accommodations that are needed, the space that we are needed, and then the instructors that will be needed uh, to carry out that assignment. Amen. We don't want to have a whole lot of instructors and nobody for the class. So we want to know what we're working with. Somebody say what we're working with. We want to know what we're working with so that we can put things in order and be able to share together. So we look forward to that time of our sharing together. And so I encourage you all to sign up uh, and to actually be a part of what we're trying uh, to do here at Ebb. There will never be a thing as normal before. And, you know, somebody said, I want it to be like it was before. I don't. Amen, somebody. <clears throat> How it was before is what got us in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, our disobedience to God, our failure to worship him, our failure to be real with the master, to live according to his holy written word, talk pastor. You know, those things of being a society where we just took the gift of God and the grace of God for granted. I don't want it to be like before. I want it to be better. Somebody ought to say better. I want it to be better. I say to our members of some things in life, if 2020 has not changed your objective, on how you live your life. Something wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. So I'm not looking for normalcy. I'm looking for better. Somebody say better. I am looking, I am looking for better. And I am asking God to grant us better. So that we can do what the Lord desires of us to do. And that we can do it in a better way. Somebody say better way. Better in a better way. Certainly so this is your prayer for preaching on today that the Lord will have his way in preaching on today. John chapter 8. John's gospel chapter number, chapter number 8. For those who have your word. John chapter 8. Again we pray for that shorter family and passing brother Cornelius Shorter. That's the brother of sister Ruth Curry, sister Carrie Mass, sister Novella Hurd. Uh, brother James uh, Jr., that's their brother. We certainly are lifting that family in our prayers again as they prepare to celebrate his life uh, on this coming Wednesday. You all keep them lifted and covered as well in your prayers. James chapter 8. James chapter 8. I'm going to read just one verse. John chapter 8, I'm sorry, just one verse I want to read uh, on today. Um, that the Lord might bless us in word. John chapter 8. You have it? Say amen. John chapter 8, verse 36. John chapter 8, verse 36. I want to read it from the New King James Version, and then I want to read it from the Amplified Bible, uh, Bible Classic Edition uh, on today. John chapter 8, verse 36. The New King James Version says, Therefore, if the Son make you free, you shall be free indeed. Therefore, if the Son make you free, you shall be free indeed. The Amplified Version, the 
Amplified Bible Classic Edition says, if the Lord liberates you, make you free, then you are really and unquestionably free. Y'all see it? So if the Lord liberates you, makes you free, then you are really and unquestionably free. I want to do a sermon today on this, on this 4th of July entitled, It's a Done Deal. It's a done deal. Tell your neighbor it's a done deal. It's a done deal. Put it in the comment section. It's a done deal. Therefore, if the Son make you free, you shall be free in deed. So if the Lord liberates you, makes you free, then you are really and unquestionably free. It's a done deal. Say it again. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. So listen to your prayers of preaching. It won't be before you long. Watch this, beloved of God. It is a dangerous thing to continuously live as an individual in bondage when freedom has arrived at your door. Something is wrong. Somebody say wrong. Something is wrong, beloved of God, when your relationship with Jesus Christ has pulled you from the muck and mara of sin and God has placed you on a solid foundation and yet you live your life as though freedom has never even crossed your path. You live in fear. You live in anguish. You live in anxiety. You live a life full of hatred, malice, evil, and strife. You say that you trust God, believe in God, that God has moved in your life and that you have accepted him as the Lord and Savior of your life. But yet you live, beloved of God, as though the Lord has not done anything for you. Still jealous. Still agitated. Still miserable, preach pastor. Still mad. Still sad. Still dealing with the past of a hundred years ago. Still dealing with past hurts and past anguishes and past anxieties. Can't see the future because you're blinded by the past. You pray to God that God will give you freedom. You ask the Lord to move in your life and bring you out. You ask the Lord to do something spectacular in your life and the Lord has done it. He's healed your body. He's made you whole. He's given you the financial blessings that, that you need. He's made provisions for life and living according to Matthew 6. He has given unto you on a daily basis your daily bread. And yet we keep living as individuals beloved of God who have not been set free. Something is wrong somewhere beloved when we live our lives and profess to be holy, profess to be righteous, profess to live according to the permissive will of the master. You cannot profess to be right and righteous and still live as though the Lord has not done anything in your life. I've been saying this for over 31 years, almost 32 now here at Ebenezer City for eight years while pastoring the St. John Baptist Church. You can't keep using that same excuse, I'm trying. You can't keep saying, I'm working on me, I'm, I'm praying about it. Listen, beloved of God, if God is your God, if Christ is your Savior, if the Holy Ghost is your keeper, then, beloved of God, we learn how to live our lives by junking what's holding us hostage and dancing the freedom dance of what the Lord has done in our lives. Y'all should really help me preach up in here. See, beloved of God, some of you all can't dance. You can dance the hustle, but you can't dance the freedom dance. You can do the electric slide. But you can't do the freedom. I wish I had some help up in here. Matter of fact, the reason some of y'all hustle so much and ballroom so much and freedom slide so much and all of that other stuff is because, beloved of God, you yet dancing and living in a spirit of misery and miserable. Have you ever noticed that something about the freedom dance is different? Watch this here. When the Lord set you free, you don't dance like other people dance. 
nor do you dance to the beat of other y'all should help me preach up in there. Nor do you dance to the other beat of the beat of other people's music. When the Lord has set you free, you don't need nobody to tell you to take it to the right and take it to the left and go back and come forward and squat down and all that stuff. When the Lord has set you free, people will identify that something has happened in your life by your dance. Think I'm lying? Ask David. The record said when the Lord set David free and, and moved in the life of David and the children of Israel, that David danced so until he got butt naked. I wish I had some help up in here. And David was dancing and nobody got embarrassed but his wife. I wish I had five good saints up in here. Yeah, the wife got embarrassed, said to David, you out there with your clothes off and can on, dancing butt naked in the street, where David tried to get her to realize, I didn't even know what type of dance I was doing, nor did I know I was butt naked. David said, I was just dancing a dance of freedom. I surrendered my whole self to the Lord, and I danced. Because the Lord sent me set me free somebody ought to say something up in here yeah yeah beloved of god when the lord set you free you don't know what you're doing you get out of church talk about child i got happy i was just dancing in can on and i didn't even, I, I just danced. they was trying to catch me i was dancing well baby if you dancing and you know somebody trying to catch you then you ain't really dancing in the spirit because when you dancing in the spirit, you don't really know what happened in the end. Somebody used to tell you what went on in the end. One of the reasons that most of us cannot celebrate the freedom of Jesus Christ in our lives is because we're so in tune with the bondage of America. And because we're so in tune with the bondage of America, we stay more committed and watch what America is doing to us rather than what God has done for us. God help me preach today, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, we find ourselves in that way. In America, just a few weeks ago, in the United States of America, <clears throat> at the White House, folk gathered together where, where Juneteenth became an official national holiday. National holiday, legally uh, 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 recognizing uh, 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 the supposed freedom of black slaves in America. Notice I said supposedly. Recognizing the freedom of black slaves in America. Yeah, people were happy and excited and start dancing because they gave us another holiday. I wish I had five people up in there. I'm doing my best not to mess with nobody on 4th of July. They gave us another holiday, but they still ain't gave us our freedom. Yeah, another another holiday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, for it. Thank you all in the, in the legislation for it. They, they, they've given to you and I another holiday. This is what I told somebody. We don't need another holiday to act a fool. Another holiday to cook some ribs and drink some beer and some liquor and smoke some weed and, and turn up the music. We don't need another one of them holidays. We, we, need, we need a holiday, beloved of God, that will allow us to learn how to be thankful to God for the freedom that the Lord has given unto us. They signed this into law. Give us another holiday while Republican-led uh, legislation uh, uh, support it. Support it now. Support it by some black African-American leaders. Still strive to divide us rationally uh, uh, and, and unjust and unjust unbiased uh, 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 supreme court led by a black man who's a part of the team still desires to racially divide america and watch this here trying to enslave us all over again by voter suppression we look free but we're we're free with a leash around our neck. Somebody will help me preach up in here. We're, we're only free to a point where, 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 where we can almost get to where we need to be. Somebody's always checking our, checking our chain, trying to bring us back to where we need to be. In America, freedom is still not a done deal. 
Tell your neighbor, it ain't happened yet. It ain't happened. It ain't happened yet. It is still not a done deal. Matter of fact, when you pause and examine today's text of scripture, today's text of scripture almost speaks to the same scenario in which you and I are living in in the day and time in which we're living. Watch the text. In today's text, Jesus addresses again the self-righteous scribes and Pharisees. The individuals who are walking around, beloved of God, being judgmental of somebody else. Preach, pastor. Yeah, be, being judgmental of other individuals. Self-righteous. Individuals who think they got it going on and think they know what they're doing and think that they're better than somebody else. Self-righteous thinking that they're the ones that got it together while everybody else is jacked up, tore up, messed up from the floor of self-righteous. Individuals who trying to trying to look at their own lives and then turn around and try to tell somebody else how messed up they are. Let me tell you what's dangerous with being self-righteous. What's dangerous with being self-righteous is that you have forgotten that the same God who gave you grace is the same God who gave me grace. But then most importantly, what's dangerous about self being self-righteous is that you have forgotten what the Lord has done for you. And now you walk around thinking you better than somebody else. Anytime you self-righteous, you out of order. You not need the hand of God in your in your life. Can't preach long. Watch this here. The text reveals unto you and I the self-righteous people are at it again. There was a woman that they found who was cow, uh, caught what they called in the very act of adultery. And they bring this lady to Jesus to question Jesus about this woman being caught in adultery. What's bad about it is that they bring only one. They bring only one person to Christ caught in adultery when there were many that were involved. It takes two to tangle. Somebody say two. In her case, it may have been three. Could have been four. Could have been many. The text reveals unto us that they only bring one. Watch this here. The buddy system will get you killed. Most importantly, the buddy system will get you in trouble with Jesus Christ. I try to tell Ebenezer members all the time, listen here, if somebody got a problem with me, don't you take up for them. Don't you make it a buddy sick. Don't, don't you join the team and, 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 and come on board and say, well, you know, pastor, you need to do this. And well, pastor, you need to do that. And well, pastor, that need to happen. And well, pastor, that need to take place and carry on. Oh, keep it love to God. You got to be careful of the buddy system because when you get the buddy system involved, I got only one person on my side fighting for me, and he's able to see what you cannot see and able to see beyond what you see. And while you're trying to fix it, he's writing in the sand. He got his finger in the dirt. I wish I had some church people up in here. So, somebody ought to say it with me. While you're trying to get me, he's writing for me. Record the class, when they come to Jesus, Jesus just goes down and start writing. And then when Jesus gets through writing, he looks up and says, he who is without sin, cast the first stone. And the record say he went back. I wish I had some church people in here. Yeah, he stooped back down. And the record said when he looked up again, the accusers were. They were gone. Somebody say gone. The, 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 the accusers were gone. And Jesus said to the woman, where are those that accuse you? There's none here. Jesus said to the woman, go on your sins. I forgive you. Go and sin no Preach up in there, pastor. In other words, what Jesus says unto her, because there are no accusers that I am the Savior, and I'm able to forgive you of your sins. What I've just done for you has forgiven your sins. It's a done deal. <laughs> yeah, no matter what people might say about you when they see you, that was a woman caught in adultery. That was a woman that was sleeping around. That was a woman that was messing up. Jesus said to the woman, don't you pay that thing no attention. I have forgiven you, and regardless of what anybody say about you, you, it's a gun. I need an Ebenezer moment, but I'm trying my best not to get y'all in this predicament up in here. Why, why, you all just lift up your hands and say, it's a done deal. Yeah, that when the Lord delivers us, when the Lord sets us free, that the devil in hell 
can't captivate us again they come to Jesus Pharisees and scribes with a whole lot of whole lot of foolishness when Jesus gets done dealing with that and then Jesus decides to move on again then they turn around and come after Jesus again they say unto Jesus who you think you is that, that you got the nerve to turn around and bear witness of yourself. <laughs> I sure wish I had me a church up in there. Can I say this one more time just to help y'all? Please read your Bible. And read the whole Bible. Read the, read, read the whole Bible. They come after Jesus again and say unto Jesus, they look at here, who you are walking around here thinking that you, that you can bear witness of yourself. They got, they got upset with Jesus because, because Jesus declares that he is the truth. I wish I had some help up in here. He declares himself as the truth and declares that they don't believe because they are witnessing from the flesh. What Jesus did is call them out. Jesus said, I'm the truth. And the reason that you cannot see it is because you don't have a spiritual eye. You're not divinely connected to my, I wish I had a church up in there. You're not, you're not divinely connected to my father. And because you ain't connected to my father, you cannot identify with who I am. Preach, pastor. I, got, I just want to make, I just want to make one more point up in here. See, beloved of God, when you live holy, when you walk holy, when you talk holy, when you have surrendered yourself to the Lord, then you ain't got to tell nobody who you are because Jesus identifies you as the light of the world, the salt of the earth. And when people see you, then people can attest to who you are. The person who cannot see your change is the person who has not accepted Jesus Christ. And they're looking at you with the naked eye, not with the spiritual eye. Preach up in that pastor. They cannot see that God has pulled you out of the muck and mire of sin, washed you clean in the blood of the Lamb, set you on a father's foundation, elevated you that your light can shine in darkness. They have not seen that the Lord has changed you, that the Lord has blessed you, that the Lord has delivered you, that the Lord has set you free. They can't see somebody say that they can't see it. They don't know what the Lord has done. They don't know how He has done it. They cannot see it. Be left to God. When you act like them, they don't know who you are. But when you're free, oh Jesus, tell your neighbor when you're free. Little church at 10, 310 West 7 Mile Road. When I was a little boy, they used to sing the song, Sister Grace of God has found, has found me. Y'all remember that little song? Since Grace found me. Places I used to go. Don't go there no more. Stuff I used to say. Don't say it no more. Not because I'm perfect. Not because I'm righteous. Not because I think I'm better than somebody else. Tell your neighbor, but grace. I need a grace crowd. Tell them, say, grace found. Grace found me. Goes on and then turn around and says, amazing. Grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like, like me. Somebody ought to help me say, like. Pat yourself. <laughs> say, say the wretch like, like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found blind. But now I now we'll see. What Jesus turned around and reveals unto them is that when we identify him as the truth, and then turn around and believe that he is the son of God. When we enter into a divine relationship with him and take the expectations of our lives off of the flesh. Yeah, the record said, then freedom comes our way. Can I tell somebody today, you can only be free if you believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't believe, you'll always be in bondage. Yeah, if you, if you don't believe, you're going to always be in a, a struggle. Yeah, if you, if, you don't, if you don't believe, you're going to always be going through some things in life. 
I'm a believer. And you can say what you want to say. I am a believer. And can I have what's known as a believer's moment? As a believer, I don't wake up every day with doubts. I don't wake up every day with fears. I don't, I don't wake up every day with anxiety. Somebody help me preach up in here. Yeah, I'm a believer. Yeah, yeah, I believe that when the Lord took my past, yeah, and took my sins, yeah, that he cast them in the sea of forgetfulness. And according to the scripture, they shall never rise against me again. <laughs> well, I got to close because the record declares unto us that when the Lord reveals unto us, yeah, that by accepting him, that he gives us freedom. <laughs> the, the record declares that when he gives us freedom, it's a done deal. Yeah. Somebody ought to say a done deal. Yeah. Yeah. When, when the Lord gives you and I freedom, yeah. Yeah. what the Lord reveals unto you and I, yeah, is that it is in divine order. Yeah. 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 It is beloved of God. Yeah. And one of those agreements yeah, that God has laid in our lives. It is a complete agreement. Yeah. Somebody say it is completed. Yeah. Yeah. It it is an agreement that has been arranged and it cannot be changed. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said, well, if the Son make you free, then you are free indeed. If he liberates us, then the record declares that there is no question about our freedom. I gotta let you go, Ebenezer. I just come by here to tell somebody it's a done deal. When the Lord saved me, when the Lord redeemed me, when the Lord brought me out of darkness and placed me in the marvelous light, when the Lord pulled me out of the muck and mire of sin and notice I'm saying me because I don't know where you all stand yet you're too quiet for me you act like the Lord has not done anything for you but you don't mind if I testify for a moment on that last Wednesday in April of 1973 at a prayer meeting service I came to Jesus just as I was, weary, wounded in sin, and he picked me up, turned me around, I truly did, accepted him as the Lord and Savior of my life, and when I gave my life over to the Lord, can I tell you what happened, he took the cleansing blood, Somebody ought to help me in here and say the cleansing blood. He took the cleansing blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary and he washed me and he made me clean. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing. What if I have had somebody? I tell them nothing but the blood of Jesus. He washed me clean. He renewed me. He drew me close to him. And then he changed me. And here I am. In 2021, on the first Sunday of July, trying to tell somebody I'm free. Anybody free with me? I'm free. It's a done deal. I'm free, I ain't got to make no excuses, I'm free, I ain't got to look back over my life, I'm free, and since the Lord made me free, can I tell you what I'm doing, I'm walking, oh praise his holy name, somebody ought to walk with me in here, since I've been changed, I'm walking,
walking in newness. I'm walking in the hope. I'm walking in joy. I'm walking in salvation. I'm walking in the promises of God. My Savior. Anybody walking? I'm walking because He changed my soul. I'm walking because He made me whole. I'm walking because He renewed me. I'm walking because He died for me. I'm walking because He got up for me. I'm walking because He got all power in His hand. Anybody walking? If you're walking, say yeah. Everybody free, you ought to lift up your hands and go back to hell and say, praise the Lord, I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free, praise the Lord, praise On Independence Day, on Independence Day, on Independence Day, I ain't celebrating America's freedom. I'm celebrating my spiritual freedom. And since I celebrate my spiritual freedom, that America cannot bind me. It cannot hold me down. It cannot oppress me. It can't keep me down. Praise the Lord. I gotta go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm free. You ought to tell your neighbor, get out the way. I need some shouting room. I need some worship room. It's a done deal. It's a done. I'm through. Let me say this. Let me say this. I'm through. Let me say this. It's a done deal. The devil won't be, but he can't have me. I so wish I had a church up in here. The devil want my house. The devil want my family. The devil want me. The devil want my homies, my millers, my dogs. The devil want the other saints in my life. But watch this say, he can't have me. He can't. He can't have me. Because I'm. I'd be so glad when we get there. I'd be so glad. I'd be so glad. I'd be so glad. I'd be so glad when y'all stop being churchy and start being righteous, holy, just, and living according to the will of the master. I'd be so glad when y'all stop being petty and get righteous. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to this. Quit getting petty. Be righteous. It ain't, it ain't about us.
It's about him who has redeemed us and set us free. I threw the door open. The door is, the door is open. The door is, the door is open. The door is open. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. Matter of fact, let me tell you something. I might mess up on this journey, but because I've accepted him as Lord and Savior of my life, I'm sealed to the day. See, I keep telling y'all, don't, y'all don't know when to get happy. I'm sealed to the day of redemption. Where the sealed people at? Where the sealed? Sealed. 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 To the day of redemption. Well, the invitation is yours. Man, woman. I'm free. Man, woman. Boy or girl, come on. I'm free. Come on, accept him. No Get your mic, Trisha. Come on and accept him. No more I want y'all to hear this. Get that mic, Sister Mills. Come on. Come on, Saints. Let me hear you. Praise the Lord. be free too today. Come on. This is your invitation. Come on. Come on. You watching us virtually? Listening to us on the conference call line in the sanctuary. The Lord said you can enjoy your spiritual freedom. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, let me hear them. Come on, saints. Come on, saints. We not spectate, we worship. Come on, I'm free. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. You can come to him. You can surrender your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One more time, one more time, one more time. Praise him. Come on, Saint. What the free people that let me see your hand. Let me see your hand. Free. No, you're free. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. You're free. If you can't say you free today, you ought to come on up here with me. your hands together. At home, put your hands together. On the conference line, put your hands together. Oh, how good the Lord is. Oh, how good the Lord is. My, my, my.
Come on, you owe the Lord this worship. 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 He's kept us. Sustained us. Delivered us. Healed us. Set us free. Brought us out. Brought us over. But most importantly, saved our soul. We owe him. We owe him. We owe him this this praise. The Lord called me from labor to reward. I don't want to die in debt to the master for what he's done in my life. I learned a long time ago how to stop praying, thanking the Lord for what he does daily. Because I, I forget something. So I learned how to say for everything. Anybody with me in here? That you've done for me. That that I've seen. And that that I have not seen. Thank you for. Somebody say everything. 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 That you've done. In my life. It's a done deal. I'm, I'm through. I'm telling you all. I'm through. I'm through. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. <laughs> it's a done deal. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. My, my, my. Done. Sealed. Done. Sealed. Done. Done. Sealed. Where y'all at? Done. Sealed. Sealed and done. Sealed and done. Done and sealed. My Lord. Done and sealed. Why we in the spirit of worship? Come on, brother officers. Come on, preachers. Come on. Put somebody there, Deacon Turner. Put somebody there. While we flow in the spirit of worship. Come on, brothers. Come on, brothers. How good the Lord is. How good he is. How good the Lord is. Conversation about spiritual freedom started at a supper table with Jesus and his disciples. The promise of redemption, the sacrifice of a slain lamb, 
the purification or cleansing of sin by pure blood took place while Jesus was sitting at the table with his disciples. The reminder of his coming and how close his impending death was causes him at this last supper to speak to them about what he had talked about in previous dialogues. Nobody take my life. I'm going to lay it down. In three days, I'm going to raise it up again. I didn't come to serve, but to be served. He reveals it in the previous conversations. And now, he puts it in divine order. Talks about being denied. Talks about being betrayed. But most importantly, he talks about the act of remembrance while sitting at the table with them. Hold the conversation. And then he starts dealing with bread and wine. Takes the bread. And reminds them that one day his body is going to be broken for the remissions of men's sins. As a part of the ultimate sacrifice that he's going to pay, he takes the bread, blesses the bread, breaks the bread, and says unto them, this you shall do in remembrance of of me. The bread represents the brokenness of his body. Blesses it, gives it to them. Takes the fruit of the vine, the wine, the cup. Reveals unto them that this cup will be a symbolic gesture of the blood that is going to be shed at Calvary for the remissions of men's sins. Y'all remember Calvary, don't you? Crown of thorns on his head, blood. Nails in his hands, blood. Spikes in his feet, blood. Spear in his side, blood. All for the remission and the cleansing of our sins. The ultimate price is paid. He says when you come together, you take this cup, eat this bread. You do it in remembrance of me. That's why I said, I hope to pray that when the church comes back together, quit saying I'm coming back like I came back, I want normalcy. No, because before then, when you commune together, you just thought about it's the first Sunday we're communing. You ought to see the real meaning of it now. Broken body. Shed blood. Ultimate sacrifice. For you and for me. Therefore, we celebrate what the Lord has done in our lives and we remember. Father, in the name of Jesus, take now the contents of the table, change it from a kernel to a spiritual use, consecrate our hearts again that we might be receivers, that we might remember that with a spirit of gratitude that we will eat and drink. Bless us as individuals. The believer receives the bountiful blessings. If there is an unbeliever today, bring them into your will. 
your way and your word. For the record declares that if we eat and drink unworthily, we eat and drink damnation unto our own souls. Cleanse us anew. Refresh us again. And bring our spirits in unity with yours. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain where you're seated at. I'm going to serve us today.
They stretched him wide. He hung his head. For me, he died. That's love. Make sure that nobody's on the outside that drove up for communion. Make sure there's nobody on the outside that drove up for communion. Church, say amen. amen. Hold on to your cups. There's going to be a container that's placed at the door. On your way out, you can drop your container in the trash on your way out. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, it's giving time. It's giving time. It's giving. It's giving time. We prepare, our, prepare ourselves to give on today and certainly to be a blessing in our giving on today. We prepare ourselves. You know how we do it. We stand all over the sanctuary. That we might prepare ourselves for giving. We're standing, even though our giving has taken place. We stand. Those who share with us virtually, those who share with us online, you can actually give through our Givelify app. New Ebenezer Baptist Church, Detroit. You can give that way. You can bring your tithes and your offerings, the love of God, to our church. Drop them off, or you can mail them to our church, the New Ebenezer Baptist Church, uh, in Detroit, Michigan. You can certainly mail them to it. New Ebenezer Baptist Church, 6300 Hartford Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, 48210. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you now for the opportunity to give. Bless now the gifts and the given. Let it be used the purpose in which it is received. You get glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give. Let's give, bless you, give me. Come on, bless you, give me, bless you, give me, bless you, give me. Put your hands together, worship him while we wait. We bless the Lord for the opportunity to give. Bless the Lord for the opportunity to give. How good the Lord is. Bless your 
Thanksgiving. Bless your giving. Bless your giving. Say amen, won't you? Amen. Listen, we praise and thank the Lord again for opportunity to be able to come together and share in this time of worship. We salute again our Sunday school staff. Come on and bless the Lord for them, won't you? Our Sunday school staff each Sunday morning. Each Sunday morning, our Sunday school staff is sharing with us uh, at 9, 15 in the morning. They're sharing with us. We invite you all to come on by and share with us. Service starts at 10 o'clock a.m. We encourage you all to get to the church as quick and early as possible. I want to say this online. I want to say it so people can hear it uh, real loud and clear. Don't call me anymore and say, Pastor, when we going back in, or I'm coming to church and all that stuff. Just keep that to yourself. If you ain't coming, just keep it to yourself. Amen. My grandmama say, keep that air because you don't know when you're going to need it again. So don't make a liar out of yourselves. All right? So we do it. Come on in and share with us in our Bible class settings as well. I encourage you all, you can do this on this Wednesday. I'm going to be down here for Bible class setting right here in the sanctuary for our Bible class on this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. You want to come in and grab, grab yourself a seat and just sit in here with us. You're more than welcome to come uh, and share with us as we study the Word of God together. You should have received your new Bible class outline in your package. If you didn't pick up your packages yesterday, you need to pick them up today so that you can be abreast of what is actually going on uh, in regard to our ministry here uh, at New Ebenezer. Join us for our Sunday School Review Thursday morning at 10 a.m. and our prayer at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, on Thursday evening. Join us uh, on our call conference line. Join us at that time as we come together to pray and to study uh, the Word of God. Again, pray for all of those who desire our prayers. Remember this, outside, say it with me, outside. Join us outside on next Sunday uh, morning at 10 o'clock a.m. You're going to notice some parking restrictions when you arrive at the church. Just govern yourself according to those restrictions that we might be able to be in the area of our church uh, building and be able to worship uh, and praise the Lord together. And then lastly, listen, there are so many major improvements that's going to start taking place at our church. You're going to see some stuff going on within the next couple of weeks. Beloved of God, major improvements are going to be taking place here around uh, New Ebenezer as we finish up windows and finish up doors and floors and all of those things. Major improvements are going to be taking place, and we need you to keep continuously supporting ministry. Amen, somebody. Continuously support ministry. I'm going to ask that you do me one huge favor starting next week, and that is to sow something special into building fund. Sow something special into building fund. Uh, on next week as we continue to move forward with these major improvements. By the time we get into our sanctuary, into our church, by the time winter here, things should look a whole lot different on the outside. And then we work our way on the inside. Say amen, somebody. And so we're asking for your support. We're asking for your prayers. But we're also asking for your financial contributions. Come on and stand with us, won't you? Come on. Come on and stand with us. Next Sunday outside. That's a good Sunday to give to building funds. It's a good Sunday to give a building fund. Let the church, let the church say amen. Let the, church the whole church. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. One more time. Oh, yeah. Let the church. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church say. Now may the love of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. Every heart says amen. 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 God bless you. Deacons and preachers still remain here for a moment. All of our deacons and preachers, we need you for one moment. For one moment. For one moment.